In the summer of 1975, a pair of 45-year-old identical twin brothers were found dead at a fashionable Manhattan address. The bodies were those of Cyril and Stuart Marcus. Once highly esteemed doctors who had apparently died as the result of a shared drug-induced mental breakdown. The rise and precipitous fall of the Marcus brothers inspired a New York best-selling novel, which in turn inspired David Cronenberg's infamous 1988 psychological thriller, Dead Ringers. Today, on Scream to Screen, we depict the eccentric lives of the Marcus twins and how their questionable deaths inspired one of Cronenberg's most memorable feature films to date. But first, make sure you subscribe to The Graveyard Shift for even more thrilling news and psychological stories that inspired your favorite horror flicks. Born on June 2, 1930, Twin brothers Stuart and Cyril Marcus lived eerily parallel lives until their simultaneous deaths in 1975. According to an Esquire magazine article in 1976, the brothers shared the same childhood, attended the same college, joined the same fraternity, and held the same academic honors. Both Marcus boys were well-respected obstetrician gynecologists on the staff of New York Hospital and Cornell University Medical College, and also shared a very successful private practice there. Together, they published a seminal textbook on obstetrics and gynecology and co-wrote several articles for multiple medical journals about infertility before going down a road of drug addiction. Over several years, patients and colleagues alike reported multiple incidents surrounding the brothers' increasingly erratic behavior. They began skipping their shifts at the hospital and canceling appointments at their private practice. They even began mutual impersonations of each other. One twin would leave his patient in the middle of an examination, and the other would return to the stirrups to complete the job. On several occasions, the hospital board had to step in through administrative action in order to protect patients and the hospital from possible malpractice. Stuart Marcus reportedly screamed and raved at a patient uncontrollably after a minor indiscretion. In another incident, one of the brothers ripped the anesthetic mask from the patient's face and used it on himself. He was immediately sent away and replaced by his brother, whose sluggish and groggy behavior also raised red flags that he was not all there. In hindsight, all of these incidents were telling warning signs of some sort of substance abuse, or in this case, a heavy use of barbiturates. It has since been revealed that the doctors performed several operations while under the influence of drugs. In June of 1975, roughly a month before the brothers shared demise, the hospital informed Stuart and Cyril that there would no longer be appointed to the staff and that their tenure would cease in the beginning of July. Having been off staff for over 15 years, the Marcus twins were offered a chance to appeal the decision before the board, but sadly, they failed to show up for their appeal. By then, they had already passed. For a week, neighbors complained about a foul-smelling odor emanating from the brothers' shared apartment in Manhattan. Then, on July 17, 1975, the brothers were found dead in separate rooms by the apartment building's handyman. The apartment had been strewn with filth that had apparently accumulated over an extended period of time. According to one of the detectives on the case, there wasn't an inch of the floor that wasn't littered. Photos of the scene revealed vast seas of garbage, unfinished TV dinners and half-drunk bottles of soda, and greasy sandwich wrappers and crumpled plastic garment covers. Perhaps the most ghastly sight was that of an armchair filled with feces that the brothers apparently used as their toilet in their final days. Suspected factors in death included mental illness and possible suicide pact. The department chair at New York Hospital during the Marcus Twins' time of misconduct Dr. Fuchs received heavy scrutiny for apathetic approach and tolerance while addressing the overwhelming evidence that the doctors Stewart and Cyril Marcus were not fit to practice medicine. At best, he appeared reluctant to interfere with the brothers' deteriorating private practice. It would not be a stretch to say that New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center risked the lives and well-beings of patients by not taking prompt action at the first hint of trouble with the brothers. Furthermore, the hospital's first response upon the twins' perplexing deaths was complete denial. In a lengthy defense of its actions, the hospital reversed its position of refusing to say whether it had done anything to protect patients from possible malpractice or to help the sick brothers. 
Reports of the twins' deterioration in the New York Times stirred up an old debate over how best to protect the public from doctors who become, through physical or mental illness, unfit to practice. Because of what happened with the Marcus brothers, that was once voluntary became law. Although the New York State Medical Society had set up its own voluntary program for impaired physicians three years earlier, the Marcus case prompted the state legislature to pass a law that doctors had to report any colleagues suspected of misconduct to the state medical board, and those who didn't would face misconduct charges themselves. Several mysterious elements also emerged from the twins' passing. One such mystery concerned that specific cause of death. Examinations had revealed no evidence that either brother had been suffering from serious illness such as cancer. Drugs and depression were theorized as the main causes leading to their demise, but suicide and homicide were soon ruled out. At first, the medical examiner had assumed that the brothers had taken their own lives by overdosing on sleeping pills due to finding a large number of empty barbiturate bottles in Cyril's apartment. But toxicologists' reports and autopsy tests revealed no trace of barbiturates in either brother's body. The medical examiner's office next concluded that Stewart and Cyril had died from an attempted withdrawal from barbiturates, as they were both known for taking mammoth doses of nimbutal for years, and such withdrawal can, in the case of chronic barbiturates addicts, be as fatal as the addiction itself by producing life-threatening seizures and convulsions. Some experts began questioning the theory after the Emmys report was released. However, since the body showed none of the typical signs that accompany death by convulsion, such as bruises, tongue bites, and brain hemorrhaging, new tests were performed, and although traces of barbiturates were discovered in Stewart's system this time, Cyril still came up clean. Another puzzle that still leaves more questions than answers is how Cyril apparently outlived his brother by several days. Police investigators learned that he had even left the apartment once Stewart overdosed, only to return and die alongside him. But where he went, or what he did, can only be answered with speculation. Stewart died sometime between July 10th and July 14th of a barbiturate overdose. Cyril died between July 14th and July 17th, when he was last seen out of the apartment, apparently after Stewart had already passed. The final autopsy report detected zero trace of barbiturates or any other drug in Cyril's system, but his body showed no signs of fatal convulsions accompanying narcotic withdrawal. The direct cause of Cyril's passing still remains a mystery to this day. The peculiarities involving Stuart and Cyril's life and death went on to inspire the psychological horror-thriller novel Twins by Barry Wood and Jack Geesland, which follows a highly fictionalized version of the Marcus Brothers story. Released just two years after their deaths, Twins was on the New York Times bestsellers list for 12 straight weeks and later became the source material for David Cronenberg's Dead Ringers. Esteemed filmmaker David Cronenberg's oeuvre is characterized by grotesque visuals and even more grotesque characters. Focusing on the horror of the human body and the interactions of psychology and technology, his artsy films have become cult classics amidst genre enthusiasts. One of Cronenberg's most nauseating and therefore beloved films, Dead Ringers, tells the story of the malpractice and mayhem created by identical twin brothers and New York gynecologists, Elliot and Beverly Mantle, in the 1970s. It showcases the rivalry between the two brothers as they struggle to find their own identities and assume the dominant role in their shared existence. The successful yet nefarious duo have a penchant for trading places while seducing female patients but their lives ultimately spiral out of control due to both decadence and extensive drug usage. The movie traces the pair's descent into madness. As each twin sins, they begin a psychotic experiment to create ghastly medical tools for their own personal, horrific reasons derived from drug-induced hallucinations. While Elliot and Beverly are loosely based on Stuart and Cyril Marcus, Cronenberg took many creative liberties depicting the brothers' tortured psychologies and personal desires. The film depicts the two men deceiving multiple women by posing as each other, whereas in reality, the doctors lived relatively unassuming lives until they were both found dead in their shared apartment. Esteemed actor Jeremy Irons took on the role of both twins and was originally given two separate dressing rooms with two separate sets of costumes for playing the two characters. However, Irons felt the whole point of the story is to sometimes be confused as to which brother is which, so he chose to use only one dressing room and combine the different wardrobe items intended for both characters. 
To prepare for the role, Irons developed an internal way to portray either brother by employing what is called the Alexander Technique for different energy points. To keep track of whether he was playing Elliot or Beverly, the actor always performed one character with his weight on the balls of his feet and the other on the weight of his heels, giving each character his own appearance. Although Dead Ringers more closely resembles the case of Stuart and Cyril Marcus, director Peter Greenaway notes that Cronenberg queried him for two hours about his film, A Zed and Two Knots, a psychological drama depicting identical twin zoologists eight months prior to filming the Barry Wood novel. Brilliant yet emotionally cold, Dead Ringers asks disturbing questions about the nature of individual identity and explores such themes as eroticism, narcissism, misogyny, and masculine-feminine dichotomies. Cinema, in its long history, has often paired themes of medicine with the horror genre. The mad scientists, experiments gone awry, perverse caregivers, frightening instruments, grotesque human anatomy, and bodily transformations into figures of terror. What is it about the theme of medicine and human anatomy that makes for such horror and suspense? The answer is simple. It is the loss of ultimate control. That is, control over your own body. If you can't control your body or what happens to it, you are not in control of anything. Twins are also prevalent in horror movies. The ultimate example of this appears in one of the most famous horror movies scenes of all time, The Red Rum Sisters in The Shining. As Dead Ringers combines both medicine with twins, the film can only be classified as horror. The Marcus brothers shared a strong bond, a bond that drove them into the same field of study, the same addictions, the same downward spiral, and eventually the same death. Their simultaneous demise highlights the internal struggle of forming an identity and the unrelenting kinship that often stunts that growth. And well, there you have it. Once highly esteemed New York doctors whose real-life struggle and substance abuse and drug addiction that led to their untimely deaths spawn an iconic cult horror classic by one of the most prolific genre directors in the business. So, what do you think? What piece of the Marcus Brothers story may your skin crawl the most? Do you want to watch Dead Ringers or one of David Cronenberg's various other classics tonight? Let us know in the comments your thoughts and don't forget to check in on any sets of twins you may already know. Don't forget to like and subscribe to The Graveyard Shift for all your horror needs and drop a comment to let us know what true life stories that possibly inspired your favorite films that you want to learn more about next time on Scream to Screen.